Live from Joe's mom's basement, it's the Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and according to this crazy calendar Joe's mom got me, happy tuberculosis day. Are you kidding me? Who made this a holiday? Yeah, we're all gasping with excitement for this special day. Speaking of that, does your grocery bill make you wheeze? Well, you can breathe easier because today we'll help you drop those food expenses. Had enough of those breathing jokes? Yeah, that's two of us. Joining us for a budget trimming discussion, we welcome the host of the Yo Quiero Dinero podcast and founder of the Financial Freedom Summit, Janice Torres. Plus, say hello to our regular lecturer of Money Matters and a guy who sucks the air out of the room. Okay, that's got to be the last TB joke. Marcus Welby, MD. Nah, he's too busy fixing his iron lungs, so instead we just have his older brother, Len Penzo. And finally, a resident cost-cutting expert who hasn't seen the inside of a grocery store since the dawn of Instacart, OG. But that's not all. Halfway through the show, we'll see which panelist has enough wind left in them. Oh my God, they just keep coming to get my trivia question. And now, a guy who certainly knows how to go cheap. It's Joe Saul Cihai. Hey there, stackers, and happy Friday to you. I am Joe Saul Cihai, average show money on Twitter, and Turby Colossus jokes. Never get old. Never, no, just horrible. That is just, who made this a holiday, Doug? It's, it's, oh, an angry, angry person. Like when we were, when we were looking up today, like, like we've got a very special guest today and we're like, okay, we have to have a very special holiday. And then we see that it's, yeah, maybe the worst she, holiday she, ever. She looks unamused at yeah. the moment over the tuberculosis humor. <laughs> oh, I think like, we all this are. Is so morbid. My God. <laughs> Why would we commemorate oh, this? Oh, there's so much more, Janice. <laughs> <laughs> you just said I don't in. really know what I signed up for here. I'm starting to we, question. Yeah, we could go way lower. We're about to introduce her in a second, but we'll have our special guest go last. First of all, let's say hello to the man across the uh, card table from me. He had two shots of espresso, and he's ready to roll. Mr. OG is here. It. I'm ready to do it. Yeah, just one, yeah. just one espresso, but um, but it had sugar in it, so it's like no. two. <laughs> Doug said, Doug said you have not been in a grocery store since Instacart came around. Is that true or false? Uh I went to the grocery store a couple of weeks ago, but that started the Girl Scout thing because I was going on, I think, Valentine's Day and I didn't make it in like there's the airlock where you walk in and then there's like a little space for the carts and then you walk in more. And it happened that the Girl Scouts were right there, so I didn't have to go all the way in. I was like, oh, cookies. Perfect. Happy Valentine's <laughs> Day. I got your cookies. That was a close one. Yeah. Who needs groceries? So you got breakfast, yeah. lunch and dinner covered I, by the Girl Scouts. I saw there's a Whole Foods by me. I've been meaning to explore. He's like, I wonder what that is. What's in that building? And the guy who uh, cooks a d delicious lasagna. I know because I've had it. <laughs> Mr. Len Penso is here. How are you, man? I'm doing well. You know, I've, I've, I've been going to my uh, grocery store quite regularly. I've, I noticed the past few weeks, my favorite checker uh, wasn't there and hasn't been there for, for a while. So oh, that got, no. you know, no. yeah, it was, it was kind of disturbing. And, um, I asked what had happened and, and, uh, the manager told me that, uh, she just checked out. So, oh, <laughs> oh, but, oh, God, <laughs> oh, I told we you all I saw it coming I 30 <laughs> seconds away. I even had to just sit there and take it. <laughs> even Janice got uh, <laughs> scowled at that one. So that's pretty bad even, uh, when the guest, when the guest is scowling. <laughs> dad jokes Len, you're 101 Len, well Len your dad jokes are the second best gift somebody can give you know what the best joke is silence <laughs> uh, no, you know, it's, oh, oh, that's, that's probably the real answer but the answer I'm going to give you is a broken drum because you just can't beat it <laughs> okay, okay. come on and seriously wondering if we can go lower and yes we can it's about time we got her here we've been threatening to do this for a long time from the okiero de Nero podcast and a fellow plutus winner we were comparing our uh little trophies earlier jenny Torres is here how are you <laughs> i'm so excited to be here this energy is just next level i can't even can't even wrap my head around like, it right now <laughs> oh yeah you have no idea she's I like she's calling she's calling her agent right now going i have no idea what the hell you got me into 
<laughs> well, well, tell everybody first, because you've got a big special event coming on that I want to talk about in a second. But let's talk about your award winning podcast. Tell yeah. me about Yo Kiro De Niro. What do you do? So I talk about entrepreneurship, investing, building generational wealth, all from the lens of being a first gen Latina who didn't learn anything about money and kind of had to navigate the world of adulting with money on my own. I found myself having lots of conversations with peers and friends and we just nobody knew what was going on. You know, we're told to go to college, get a career, make some money. There's this thing called a 401k. You know, it sounds like it's something we should have. And it sounds like a long way to run is what it sounds like. (laughs) And uh, after kind of getting into the personal finance space as a consumer, especially with podcasts, you know, podcasts like uh, Journey to Launch and Stacking Benjamins, of course, I found that there was still, um, kind of a void when it comes to my experience as a Latina. And so I decided to just insert myself into the conversation and start my podcast from the closet of my home. And here I am four years later doing this full time, just got on the internet, started talking about money. It's so Weird. great. And, and we need more voices, Janice. Seriously, how do we get more voices? Because we seriously need more. I think it's kind of happening because people are seeing folks that they can identify with kind of showing up in a space, right? So if you want to inspire others to join the conversation, you have to be part of it too. That's what I found time and time again. I get messages from so many people that it's like, wow, I I didn't know I could invest. I I didn't know what a 401k was. I didn't know I could start a business, but then I started seeing you and all the guests that you bring on the show talking about this stuff. And I started to believe that these are, these are things that I can do too. So it's really about showing up for the people that you want to serve, I think. Absolutely. A hundred percent. You, by the way, not only have served this, this community, the financial community, you've also, we're going to talk food today. And I believe because you've done a lot with food, right? Yeah. That's how I started my whole content creation journey as a blogger. Now, 10 years ago, I started a food blog called delishdelights.com. It's still in existence today. And in it, I've basically archived my family's culinary history. And it was just something that I started as a passion project. I was kind of frustrated with my engineering career and wanted to do something more creative. And so blogging was the thing that I I found I could. I didn't want people to know who I was. I just wanted to create cool content. And I think that's why people start blogs and also podcasts. But now we've got the whole video and TikTok. And I'm like, well, so much for that. You know, kind of got to show up now. I, I, I hear you on that. I understand that whole, whole, the whole theory. Yeah. I just don't dance well enough for TikTok. I don't know. I, d- <laughs> I don't. But you know, we got one more thing we want to tell people. And we're going to talk about this a lot at the end of today. But you've got a summit coming up. Tell everybody yeah. about this. Cool. Because tickets are going fast. Yeah, absolutely. So after starting and basically growing my platform during the pandemic where virtual was the only option, my audience has started to clamor for in-person events. They want to be in the atmosphere of Joquero Dinero in a more personal way. And so this year, actually June 2023, we're launching our first live conference in Puerto Rico, which is where I'm from. And I wanted to bring a conversation around building wealth to a place that has been historically marginalized and economically depressed for a long time. So I have this vision of bringing a bunch of people together to talk about building wealth in a place that could really use a lot of folks like myself and others who care about not just making money for the sake of making money, but using it to make a difference. Uh, So it's going to be a three day event, bringing in lots of amazing speakers, talking about everything from investing, entrepreneurship, real estate, uh, you know, generational wealth and so much more. And I'm really, really excited. It's called Our Money, Our Power, and it's a financial freedom summit to hopefully change the narrative around what wealth can look like. And, you know, we'll have a link on our show notes page to it at stackingbenjamins.com if people want to either find out more or just sign up. You you had me at Puerto Rico, by the way. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I mean, it's not a hard bargain. Itself, I know. You know. I'm thinking coffee. I'm thinking the pork highway. I'm thinking salsa dancing. I'm like, let's go right now. I am. There. Oh, you know like, your stuff. I love it. Oh my, just heaven, just yes. heaven. Uh, yeah, the oh, bio bay. I mean, oh, mm. she. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent, but we'll link to it. As I said, we have Janice here. We've got Len. We got Doug. We've got OG. Let's go talk food. Our piece today comes to us from CommonSenseHub.com. 12 keys to drastically reduce your grocery budget. This is written by the Common Sense Hub team. And this piece says... 
How to save money on groceries might not be your first thought when you're trying to cut expenses. You might look at your rent or mortgage, your car payment, the actual bills you get in the mail each month, but it's pretty common for food to be up there. But Janice, let's talk about that for a second. This piece has the word drastically in the title drastically can you really make a big dent in that budget by looking squarely at your grocery bill well i hate the word drastically because it just sounds extreme and i think you know whenever you're trying to do something extreme it's not sustainable so for me i'm like let's be strategic i like the word strategic more than drastically because that makes me feel like we're just gonna eat rice and beans every day right that just doesn't sound fun right (laughs) <laughs> absolutely horrible like like who wants any piece of that like no thank you uh, yeah. Yeah, but, but people people look at groceries len and they think well i you know i gotta eat why focus on groceries versus another part of your budget well i think everybody can relate to groceries i mean that's something everybody does all the time and it, it it's kind of you know maybe it's low-hanging excuse the pun fruit so um <laughs> you know that might be something you're all week um, so, but seriously, I mean, it's, it's, there's an easy way to start focusing. It's a good place to start. If you don't know where to start at all, go ahead and start on your grocery bill. That, that's, that's a great way to start. Well, they, they mentioned here, Len, to your point, I mean, they mentioned housing, right? Auto is another one. Groceries, number three. Think of it's changing your house for a lot of people is very difficult. Like there's sentimental value. There's all these things. Some people are attached to their car. This seems to me, Len, to be of those three biggies, the easiest one. Yeah, that's what I said. It's, it's the low hanging fruit. It's something you do every week. I think most people feel ex, you know, they, they, they actually feel competent in that topic of food. Everybody feels that, you know, they're an expert on food and, and they know where, where they can cut or at least try to start cutting. So yeah, it's a comfort level, I think. I'm an expert at eating food, but I look yeah, at like Janice's <laughs> work and I'm like, I could, if I could cook like that. Uh, I remember, I remember this client OG where their fish budget was huge back when I was a financial planner. They loved to eat fish, but they paid through the nose for it. And we actually put together a plan only because they couldn't retire the way they wanted to. We put together a plan for them to actually cut back on fish. But how often are you having granular discussions about grocery bills with clients. Is that something that happens in financial planning meetings? Not in the least bit, not in the last 20 years that I can remember. <laughs> I don't know who's, I, I thought there was a joke coming when you're like, I, so I had this client one time, I had a fish but based budget. on this, But based on this piece, should we be diving more into the grocery budget? I don't know. I think that there's ways to be smarter about it and 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 have it uh, work for you as opposed to showing up. I mean, some of the stuff is, uh, you, you know, you've heard don't go grocery shopping when you're hungry. I mean, there's a very real thing. I'm I, I was thumbing through this and I'm looking at all the pictures and I'm like, oh, blueberries look nice. But I just got done eating lunch, so I'm not super, super, uh, you know motivated by those things right now. But, but I could, you know, I know that if you do, if, if, if I hadn't had lunch, I would be just thinking about blueberries right now. It's the first picture I saw. How hungry, so. how hungry were you when you, when you only made it to the airlock and bought all the gross, all the Girl Scout cookies? Well, I wasn't, I was trying to uh, buy some, some candies for Valentine's day for my dear bride. And, uh, and I lucked out. I didn't have to actually try to find them in the store. We bought Girl Scout cookies instead, all of them. Jenny's back to back to you. I just still can't believe you bought all the Girl Scout cookies. Like, like you just made those girls' day. I want them all. Just, I, I don't think you understand. No, I made the dad's I, day. He's like, I'm out of here, man. Sweet. <laughs> Janice, you and I were, when we spoke earlier, just a moment ago, you know, people identify paying less and they think eat crappier food. But I would bet that for someone like you, you can get a little creative in the kitchen and less expensive doesn't have to mean crappier. Absolutely. No, I love kind of creating my own chopped competition at home where I just like try to figure out what meals I'm going to make based on the ingredients that I have. And uh, it can be fun, but you have to be able to kind of know what to pair up. And that comes obviously with experience cooking. So uh, I think a lot of folks have issues around like substituting stuff because maybe they just don't necessarily understand what ingredients you can swap out. Um, That takes some practice. Right. But It's usually the case for me, and I don't know if anybody else can relate that grocery shopping in itself is so physically exhausting for me that by the time I've gotten home, I don't even want to cook what I made. And I end up ordering from like Instacart, I mean, uh, from Uber Eats. And I was like, well, what the hell was the point of this? So I think, uh, you know, on top of finding ways to reduce 
the amount of money you're spending on groceries, you should probably find ways to reduce the time because th- that adds oh. up too, right? No, that's true. Because, it, and by the way, once I get into cooking, I don't worry about the time because I got music on. Sometimes I'll pour a glass of wine and it's really fun. But it's the thinking about the time that makes me go, yeah, let's hop in the car and go down to, you know, some restaurant. Exactly. And especially if you're doing like daily cooking. I mean, sometimes I'm not done with work till eight thirty, nine 9 o'clock at night. And the last thing I'm going to do is like get in the kitchen and go and make something. So it, it requires you to kind of have some forethought and planning. And I think that's one of the things they touch on in the article is just make a plan. Right. Because you're yeah. you're more likely to not have to make those spontaneous decisions. Well, and, and there's something else you touched on that really got me excited, which is this idea of of it's OK to I mean, you got to start pairing stuff, you know, yeah. and you talked about being experienced. Everybody starts with zero experience. I feel like people are afraid to, you know, we're afraid to open Roth IRAs. We're afraid to check out the 401k, but we're also afraid to experiment in the kitchen. Right. We're afraid yeah. we're just going to mess it up. But it seems like is that how you learned to cook was kind of messing it up. Absolutely. I don't measure anything. The other day, my partner was here and I'm like making rice and he's like, did you just pour rice into the pot without measuring it? Like, I've never seen that before. (laughs) And, you know, that obviously comes with time. But my mom actually taught me how to cook because she started working full time when I was around the age of 11. And so I was responsible for coming home after school and kind of getting the family meal started while she was getting home from work. So I I've always been in the kitchen. It's been it's always a place that I find to be sort of a sanctuary because it forces you to focus, right? You can't be on the screen. You can't be doing a bunch of stuff. So it's a great way to disconnect. And uh, it's definitely therapeutic for me, but I know a lot of people who hate cooking and it's the chore of it and the cleanup and, you know, I got to tell you though, that's why we have children. Once I sit down and do it, (laughs) (laughs) put them to work in the kitchen. Cinderella. Put them to work. Clean, clean. They got to do the dishes. That's fine. Yeah. (laughs) Well, well, I, yeah, I like them cleaning up. I like making the food because it does, to your point, it just takes me out of my day. It just, you, you do, you have to be there or something's going to burn. Len, Janice talked about not measuring stuff. I'm wondering, is the Italian cook here, uh, here on the show, are you the same? Do you measure your stuff? Did you learn to be the great cook that you are by, by experimenting? Yeah, I don't, I don't measure and I experiment a lot, which sometimes irritates uh, the honeybee for She'll say, well, why did you change that? You know, the same, you know, I make the same meal, but I'll change things around. It's like, because sometimes it works in your favor and things get better and sometimes it doesn't. But the only way you can improve is if you, if you experiment uh, every once in a while and change things around and no, I only measure things exactly if I'm baking. So, uh, but other than that, that, that's why baking isn't quite as fun to me as, as just cooking because cooking, you throw stuff in and, and, um, you know, it's just, it's just a lot more fun. Can I, I don't know if you heard that I, I just coincidentally, did you hear, I don't know if you heard the little ding in the background there, but my daughter just texted me with our, we do our menu planning and I let each of our kids, they get to pick two meals over a two week period each. And she just emailed me with her two choices for the next two weeks. So. I don't know if you can see like her uh, draft my, picks. My uh, yes, her draft picks right there. She just did it. She Sorry, spaghetti and meatballs sliders. has already been taken. Well, she 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 wants pulled pork sliders and tuna casserole on the menu for the next you know over the next two weeks. So while we just, we just added her taste buds, noted yes, that's what she's got. And so just out of, just out of uh, coincidence, that just came in. You should you should do those dinners at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> tuna casserole with sliders. Yeah, pork, how about, how about, pork and tuna casserole sliders. <laughs> well, we do have a mashup day where we'll mix things up. So you could have tuna slider, have tuna casserole sliders. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that hasn't made it to any of your videos or anything, Janice. You haven't, no? no, the tuna casserole thing freaks me out. I'm just like, who came up with this? This is this just does not sound appealing any way. A lot way of people in the Midwest. It. I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I say you're not from Michigan where we live on that stuff. Yeah. No, that no. Is, yes. Frozen is, peas and, and y'all are from a different <laughs> stock of, of humans. <laughs> it's a different breed out there. <laughs> Where I grew up, if it's a hundred percent bland, we're in. 
That is, that is it. Oh, you can barely taste it. It's completely not. Pepperoni is a little spicy. Let's make and the pizza. <laughs> That's right. Let's make more of that. I, w- I want to let, let before we go to our halftime break and our big trivia competition, I want to start with uh, some of the highlights of this list. We'll link to it on our show notes so people can dive into all of these 12 ways that this piece talks about. But but they begin with meal planning. And it sounds like, Len, meal planning is is a number one to your success with food. True. I, I think it's a, I think it's a big success. And, and I want to bring something up. I don't know if people think about this. I do you know how much I spent? I, I I spent last year. I'll just tell you on groceries, my grocery bill for my family of four. Keeping in mind, I do have two adult children still here. Nine dollars. Uh, Nine dollars. <laughs> no, it was seventeen thousand one hundred and one dollars. That was all food that was purchased. That that includes everything now. That includes chips and but that was the entire entire food bill for this household last year. So just it, fam, it is a, a lot of money and there's a lot of places where you can cut. So that gives you opportunities for cutting. So I just wanted to point that out. So but yes, the, the just, planning is a is a big it is a very big part of it. And and we do we are religiously plan. I mean, we have to. Other things we would get way out of control with our spending. Does that include, uh, OG asked the question, does that include uh, restaurants? No, that does not include restaurants. That does not include restaurants. Restaurants were another 53,000. <laughs> uh, sounds about right. <laughs> I could look it up. I can tell you, I can tell you what the restaurant bill was. I can't, the, I don't the know. The four meals head, led but. made at home cost $17,000. <laughs> 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 Off the top of my head, I can tell you we went out to a restaurant 68 times last year. I can tell you that. Well, off the top of I don't know, Janice, who's the bigger engineer? Do you keep track like Len does? I absolutely don't. I really can't do the spreadsheet thing that, that are... aggravates my algebra. <laughs> can't do it. Are... I don't want to know. We're not worthy. Uh, uh, Janice, what about you, meal planning? You do meal planning? You know, I have to because I live alone. And if I don't plan, there's just going to be so many things that go to waste, right? Like everything that's packaged in the store is packaged for families. I will buy a pack of chicken and like that pack of chicken will last me the entire week. So I have to get creative on how I'm going to use it. Um, But I, I do like to plan just because my schedule is so erratic and I'm not the type to want to go and have fast food. You know, my my trainer would definitely kick my ass if I started doing that regularly. So I'm like, I have to plan and I feel better when I eat better. Right. So it's also from the health perspective, too. Yeah, uh, Frankie Chalenza, uh, a chef that was on our show last year, and Andrea Warwick, who we spoke to just a few weeks ago on Instagram, uh, the consumer finance expert. Both of them talked about about a third of the food we buy ends up going in the trash. And so the food waste thing, man, having less food waste is a great but meal planning just from that perspective makes it better. And I find that if I meal plan Janice with good food, I'm much more likely to eat it if it's allocated for a meal versus just filling the refrigerator. I've thrown out way too many bagged salads that never got made. I just don't want to be that person anymore. (laughs) Yeah, me too. too. You feel bad, all those salads. I'm sorry, salad. I'll try again to, next we, time. We, Janice, we have that same problem in our house, and they oh, go God. in the compost. And I think I just paid four ninety nine to put something in my compost pile. <laughs> right, right. Hey, I'm going to put this in my refrigerator for two weeks and throw it away for the five bucks. Yeah. Does, yeah. does anybody does anybody eat leftovers? Because I I save about two thousand. I calculated. I save two thousand dollars a year uh, eating leftovers. Luckily, my whole family loves leftovers. We actually have yeah. a leftover night once a week from all the other meals. We put them all together and that, and I, I Len, figured it out. It saves 2000 bucks. If we did not, if we threw those leftovers away and didn't eat them, I would, our, our food bill would be $2,000 higher. I got that yeah. tip from you originally, Len, by the way, one day a week, uh, Cheryl and I have leftover night and it's yeah. planned that this is, this is leftover night. Janice? Yep, us too. Yeah. I have leftovers for lunch pretty much throughout the week, just because when I do cook, I'll just cook in bulk. But my family hates leftovers. So I'm always yelling at them when I come over. I'm like, why is half of your fridge full of Tupperware that no one's ever going to touch? Like, you guys save it out of habit, but it never gets eaten. It's so frustrating. (laughs) Well, OG, I was going to ask you about leftovers. Does a family of five have leftovers? 
Uh, I mean, now, yes, only because we have increased the, 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 the hamburger packets to a pound and a half instead of a pound, you know, because of the boys. But I, I was looking uh, to, to, to contrast this against Lanham's. It's, maybe it's just the regional differences. Our, our, our uh, grocery budget last year was just over 12000 but we spent way more money going out to eat. Um, um, that number is insanely large. Like, what did you say you're going so out to eat number was? You, your your twelve thousand includes restaurants. No, it does not. No, no it that's what he's that's what he's saying. His no. his number is lower land, but it's because they went out to restaurants. Yeah, I, okay, yeah. all right. So yeah, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm a third more, a third more. A third more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Twelve. We we did twelve of each, so we had twelve twelve in restaurants and twelve in twelve in um in groceries. But um, um, but we do the we do the meal planning thing. Um, my wife is really big on that because she, she's, she hates to throw food out. Like she gets really annoyed when, 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 you know, the bag salad type deal or, or, you know, you get the pound of turkey. Everybody loves turkey sandwiches for a week and a half. And so you go, Oh, I get another pound of turkey. And then like two months later, you're like, what's this? Oh, this is, oh, this is turkey from, you know, <laughs> October. What is that doing in here? <laughs> Cause everybody changed to peanut butter sandwiches, you know? So, um, so we definitely, and we definitely do the leftover night as well. I mean, we, we, uh, uh, have that scheduled, um, you know, on the calendar. Uh, the one thing we don't do is let the kids pick though. I like that idea. Like have them pick two over the next two. That's we're going to, we're going to start putting that one in there. At least that you know they're going to eat those two meals. If they eat nothing. You would else. think, but, um, <laughs> no, that's still not true. <laughs> Yeah, no, gee, we, we, we did that since our kids were like five, six years old. Even when they were very little, we let our kids pick each pick two of the meals yeah. on the menu, which was kind of cool, actually. Yeah, I mean, they would Lisa pick. will ask, like, what's the, you know, what, what what do you guys want or what's what are we missing? You know, because because my kids eat all the time. They're, you know, high school boys. So they just they're always eating. When, um, when my so daughter they, was they, little. When my daughter was little, she, she, one of her favorites that we used to, she picked and we, we would do it was spaghetti tacos. That would be on the list probably once a month. Spaghetti tacos. That's what happens when I you love a five-year-old. Thing, huh? A five-year-old. I, I don't think so. He's a, he's a West Coast guy. Janice. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know. I don't know, going know going in that one. I like spaghetti. I like tacos. It's just like a carne asada burrito, <laughs> but a little different. <laughs> Coming up in the second half of this discussion, we're going to dive into many of the tips on this list, see if our panel agrees with them and really what they do, like we heard already, us just starting to get into. Can't wait for that. But before that, we've got this year-long trivia competition, if you're new to Stacking Benjamins, which includes our three frequent contributors, OG, Len, and Paulette Perhatch, uh, the brilliant writer Paulette. Uh, uh, Janice, today you're t- on Team Paulette, which means good news and bad news. Do you want the good news first or the bad news? Uh, break the bad news to me first. Uh, the bad news is you're in last place. Uh, so the score, okay. OG is leading with four. Len has three and Paulette has two. But Janice, you can make that. You can change all that. You can okay. change the season right here. But to find out how, we need a trivia question from Doug. Doug, you got a trivia question for us? Sure do, Joe. Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and we've already taken your breath away with the fact that it's tuberculosis day. All right, who put that joke in there? (laughs) (laughs) To be clear, we're making fun of the holiday, not the affliction, the holiday. Tuberculosis is a serious disease, costing people millions of dollars in health care costs. So here's today's question. How many new cases were there of tuberculosis in 2021? I'll be back just as soon as I see if this stupid calendar also has a hooray for leprosy day. <laughs> All right. There's our question. And uh, and I agree. Very s- serious, serious disease. And uh, hopefully not that many cases. We're about to find out, Mr. OG, tuberculosis 2021. What? What? T- what? Tuberculosis? Tuberculosis. I've, don't I gave it my you own. Got that there, tuberculosis, don't you? I gave it my own emphasis. I just had to tuberculosis. emphasize the part that That's I like. A new, that's a whole new thing. <laughs> tuberculosis. Golly, to be able to to be able to just pull that right out. That was amazing. Um, is this worldwide? I didn't catch that part. Yeah, uh, no, United States. 
Uh, domestic. Okay. So domestic cases of tuberculosis. I know that it's a real popular thing um, to catch <laughs> on occasion. What are you talking about? <laughs> remember the remember the TikTok craze of 2019? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the tuberculosis challenge. Oh, <laughs> Cough on me here. <laughs> there oh, is. Just, uh, by the way, I am laughing because there's nothing funny about this at all. This is, yeah, we're fresh off a pandemic, y'all. This, this is still a trigger. <laughs> this is probably the worst trivia question we've ever had. <laughs> I, I do. Uh, so this is in 2022. Is this uh, as recent as oh last year? Oh my God. Were you listening at all? <laughs> I, know, I, know, I was sort of listening. 2021. Oh, yeah. That was the great tuberculosis outbreak of 21. I got to keep in mind. And um, the ratio the of people. You didn't read about it because the world was focused on a different thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, the answer is unequivocally. In the United States, 897 cases. It was pretty low, but there was still a lot. And 97. Mr. Penzo, yes. is he low or is he high? Well, that's not the question. He's just got to guess his own number. Don't give him any hints. Well, well that's a good question. It's once no, again. No, I, I think OG, it's a bad question. Well, I think I think, I think OG is in. I think OG is in the neighborhood. I I I, I was I was hoping OG would would just say oh two million or something like that because I I I think it's a low number. Uh eight hundred. Wow, that's pretty. That's like only what fifty states. What is that? Uh, Sixteen a state. Sixteen people per state. Mm, that sounds pretty reasonable, actually. I'm going, do I want to take the low end of that or the high end of that? I'm going to take, I'm going to take the low end. I'm going to say 799. 799. So Janice, you got OG at eight ninety seven. Len at seven ninety nine. What do you think? You know, one of the things that I thought of immediately when you said tuberculosis, it's like, who? Um, no, just the most random term that we could even be talking about right now is my mom and my dad, and basically all of my family members who were not born in the U.S. have this mark on their arm that I believe is an indent that's associated with the shot that you get for TB vaccination. And it's not really common in the U.S. So it's something that you can almost use as an identifier for somebody who wasn't born in the States. And I'm assuming that we don't usually get vaccinated here for TB because it's just not really prevalent. But although I do remember testing positive in school. Yeah. Would they have and that mark? Would they have that mark? Hold on for TB, uh, Len, or for polio? Is that a polio mark? I think it's a polio mark. Well, is that smallpox what it is? too. That yeah. had the smallpox small okay. and polio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but you're in the neighborhood. Other crappy diseases. <laughs> yeah. The other, uh, I don't want any of it. So you know, I don't. I don't really want any of it. But I do remember getting the tuberculin test because I don't know for some reason they were screening in school. I'm assuming yes. it's like somewhere around a thousand cases because it's not really a common vaccination. So can't she be goes a little higher. Goes to a thousand. All right. We got our answers locked in. 897 for OG, 799 for Len, Janice, and T. Paulette. A uh, thousand. We'll tell you in just a second who's right. OG, you opened this up at 897 and got surrounded by other contestants, but you feeling pretty good there at roughly 900? I, I mean, definitely a shot in the dark. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. I, I remember that. I remember hearing about it and i thought it was a three digit number but i can't be oh but len is our local sure. tb expert i'm sure you feel much more confident confident at 799 well i have a i i definitely have a bigger range than og uh but not as big a range as uh janice so uh but yeah so I, i'm feeling pretty good as so i was thinking janice if it's a million you win you're still in even if it is a i lot. know i kind of want to do like the price is right thing and be like can i just bet a dollar can we do that? <laughs> oh, well, well, it is very common. It's very common. Our friend Chelsea Brennan uh, is a verb on this show because Chelsea likes to come on and go one dollar higher than whoever the other guest is. So people get Chelsea Brennan all the time. But you were nice enough not to do that. You gave OG about one hundred 
uh, patient's breathing room. Hopefully the number's close <laughs> oh, to zero, oh, Doug, because we I want like very few job. people to have this. Yeah, you see that? All right, oh. Doug, who's going to win this thing? Hey there, stackers. I'm Al Buterol, inhaler, sharpshooter, and free mouth-to-mouth giver, Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. I bet you're dying to know the answer to... Oh, my God. Okay, that, that was it. That was... I swear, that was probably the last one. Today's ridiculous holiday question about tuberculosis. Our question was... Easy. How, Easy. <laughs> how many new cases of TB were there in the United States in 2021? Well, I can tell you this, that OG was only off by 6,985. Len was off. By 7,083, Janice was off by 6,882, which means our answer was that there were 7,882 new cases of TB in the United States in 2021, and Janice slash Paulette slash Paula is our winner. We have been redeemed. Go team Paulette. Nice. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it what is, a and I, prize to win. <laughs> that is. You, you need to write Paulette a note and say, hey, yeah. I took care of business. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Congratulations. And uh, Thank you. Uh, uh, just don't ask us, Janice, what the prize is. It's time for us to move on. Yeah, I don't want to know. <laughs> Who, I don't want to know. <laughs> just like Ann Pass. Let's go to the second half of this discussion. Instead, the second half of our topic today brought to you by Magnified Money. Janice, you know what happens when you go to stackingbenjamins.com slash magnified money? No, tell me. Oh, it's great. You find out that those brick and mortar banking products you use every day, probably not best in class because there's so much in online banking that people don't know about. Over 92% of the online banking products like CDs, high yield savings accounts rated head to head at Magnify Money. Go to stackingbenjamins.com slash Magnify Money to take a look and maybe change up and get a much better rate. I want to I want to go back to this piece and now let's dig into this tactically. They talk in this piece Janice about having a freezer meal strategy. Do you have a freezer meal strategy? Things get lost in my freezer, so I'm going to say no. I do a lot of kind of quarterly cleanouts and you know half the time the stuff that I freeze I just never end up using. It kind of disappears. So unless you have a really good stacking system or some sort of cubicle organization system in your freezer i i'm just like you know you don't need to freeze everything especially if you're not going to use it yeah we were talking about this last week we came up with this hamburger at the bottom and we're like i have no idea when this is from and <laughs> right. more, more stuff got thrown away oh gee do you guys have a freezer strategy with the family because you can you know another thing on here later on is going to be buy in bulk i would think it's much yeah. easier for you to buy stuff in bulk with a family of your size yeah, we do. Um, we do buy the, 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 you know, the bulk stuff from Costco. We'll get the slab of meat and cut up our own steaks as opposed to buying the steaks, which I know is another one in terms of like anytime you get a package deal, you know, uh, you're probably, you know, paying to have somebody cut it up for you. Um, but we will if we're making like a big like a lasagna or something like that, where it's just it just goes together better if it's, uh, you know, if it's a big pl- you know, a big dish of it, we'll make two separate dishes instead, you know, and put one in the freezer, you know, so it's just an easy kind of pull out of the freezer type deal. They do caution here. Another one of their points, OG, to your point is they caution against prepackaged items. Len, this has been lenpenzo.com you've talked about the the horrors of buying prepackaged, like you're paying a multiple immediately when you pay for somebody else to cut it up. Yeah, you know, one of the, the biggest things on that is is cheese. So um, if you get like sh- shredded like cheese, to cut your own cheese, yeah, you is that, cut are the you cheese. You like to cut your own cheese? I do. Oh, I do on. like to cut. I do like to cut my own cheese. Hold on a second. Okay, now that we've done that, uh, no, but seriously, I, I think. <laughs> Seriously, it's yourself. it's best to cut your own cheese. It's best to cut, uh, like like OG yes. said, even uh, uh, hams, the meats. Uh, uh, you there's a huge premium that you pay uh, grocery stores to do that kind of stuff. And same with vegetables. You know what I see a lot of people buying is they'll go into the produce section and you ever see these pre cut these uh, these pre cut fruit plates or these pre cut vegetable oh, yeah. plates and you buy them for part. It's like. Man, the markup on that for what you get 
you could you could you could save uh, probably 80 percent just by buying the vegetables yourself and cutting them up and putting them on a plate. But so many people I mean, that has got to be a huge profit, uh, a profit uh, center for the for the grocery stores, because it's just it's crazy. You know, OG mentioned earlier uh, buying in bulk, Denise, but if you live alone, I don't think because for, you know, there's two in our house. Buying in bulk doesn't work for us because that's when I start throwing stuff out. Absolutely. When you go to those big box stores, uh, I mean, the membership is going to cost you at least, you know, a hundred something dollars. So for me, I can't even justify the cost of the membership because I, I'm never going to need, you know, 10 pounds of freaking lobster tails. Like where the hell am I even going to put that? Right. You know, a, pa- a pallet of lobster tails. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. Give me a break. <laughs> But I don't know about you, though. I still love going in like I've gone shopping with Doug because Doug has a Doug has a Costco membership. And uh, man, just walking through that store like this is fantastic. This is yeah, I should my get a membership. Me. And I'm like, my parents take me all the time. And I'm just like, I feel like this store promotes hoarding. You know, I'm just not I'm not with it. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs 17000 rolls of toilet paper like it's okay. You know, you know, maybe if, during if, the pandemic, it made sense, but not anymore. Have you ever had lens tuna nuda casserole? <laughs> oh, God, no. no. I'm going to no. give Janice a tour. I'm going to give Janice a tour of my pantry and my garage. Bunker, and she'll see, she'll yeah, see what a huge, she'll see what hoarding is really all about. Oh, boy. This is a slippery slope. I mean, <laughs> you know, speaking of hoarding toilet paper, that's not good. No, uh, 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 it's funny because Doug, you, I think, uh, coined the phrase that I say all the time, which is there's the dollar store. And then, yeah, I think you call Costco the hundred dollar store. Oh, well, it was the hundred dollar store 20 years ago when I joined. It's now the three hundred and fifty dollar store. Right. You cannot get out of there for less. That's than the fun days. game to play when you go and you're like, I just need to get, uh, you know, a, a, a piece of salmon and uh, a bag of potatoes. <laughs> Or whatever you know and then and then you're like okay so now i've got this cart full of stuff how much did this how much did the salmon yeah right. no, exactly inflatable jacuzzi i was just happened janice i was there yesterday and i walked out of there with a 16 foot long tree trimming pole obviously <laughs> Duh. In, a, in addition to the coffee and Why the, would you not? You know, chicken breasts and socks yeah. and everything and your else. slice of pizza from the little convenience place like right at the door too because you know you just bought all this food but you definitely are not going to make any of it right they, they mentioned here uh apps and using some of the grocery money saving apps janice you're nodding your head I am obsessed with Instacart. I started using it during the pandemic and I just couldn't stop. I I can't go back now at this point because A, I'm lazy. And like I said, grocery shopping is exhausting, but also it helps you see the price of what you're going to pay. So if I'm like, I don't want to spend a hundred dollars on groceries, I get to take a couple things off of that list, you know, because I feel like a lot of the times grocery shopping is like going to the doctor. You don't really know what the bill's going to be until it's too late, right? And you're just like, oh my God, I didn't really mean to spend all this money. So it definitely helps me cut costs because I can see the total before I check out. You know, some grocery stores, yeah. some grocery stores have their own app. So for example, we Ooh. shop, I, should I, can I say the store? I guess I can say the store with that. Yes. We shop at Albertsons. Albertsons has, yes. now they're expensive. If you just go into an Albertsons, I think the prices there are quite expensive. But if you use the Albertsons app, which we do, uh, we we get off uh, usually 25 percent of our entire grocery bill just by using their app. So what you do is you pre shop kind of you say you put your list together and you get discounts when you put it into the app that you wouldn't get at the store normally. And so, for example, just last week, uh, we spent four hundred dollars. Our, our bill was four hundred dollars. Uh, but we got seventy five dollars off just by using that app. I mean, that's pretty significant savings. So this doesn't have to do with food, but it has to do with items you bring home. Target. We were at Target, uh, Cheryl and I, just this last weekend, and the woman at the register said, uh, "Have you put these through the app?" And they get on Cheryl's app together, and I think we saved on a on a forty five dollar bill. I think we saved like seven or eight bucks, like a huge, a big amount, just by putting them on the app. And by the way, th- th- these aren't marked anywhere at the store. It's just marked Correct. differently at the store than it is on the app. But they will price compare. If you put it through the app, they will uh, 
they'll take care yeah, of it. And you have to they, use the, you have to use the code, you know, when you go grocery shopping, you have to put in your phone number or whatever. If you don't put in your phone number, you're, you're given easy money away. Just use somebody yeah. else's phone number. Like we did talked about the eight, six, seven, five, three, Oh nine number. We like did. somebody uses that. We did. It worked. We found that out Janice from a stacker, <laughs> from a stacker at almost every grocery store. If you don't want to give them your number, give them eight, six, seven, five, three, Oh nine. And it works. Oh my God. <laughs> it works. Incredible. <laughs> you know, speaking of the apps too, it's important to see if the store that you want to use on an app like Instacart is actually raising the price. If you shop through them, because some of them will have equivalent oh. price. Pricing, and some of them will actually charge you more for ordering through the app. So make sure that you check. It should say it at the top of uh, the menu. I've got uh, two more on here I want to talk about, which is uh, buy meat sparingly because it's so expensive. This is one I've heard about a lot and I have yet to move on. OG rolls his eyes and scoffs at that one. He's like, you're not getting me away from all the meat at the table. But Leonard, Janice, have you guys have you guys uh, cut back on the meat? I had to cut back on eggs recently because, I mean, really, who is going to pay $7 for a carton of eggs? Eggs used to be the cheap protein, and now it's like a luxury, right? I'm like, I can't afford to have breakfast anymore. Um, so I, I I wanted to cut out meat more from like a health perspective versus just because it's more expensive. Um, I tried the pescatarian thing, but as you know, Joe, fish and seafood is hella expensive. Oh, so I yeah. Said, no, I'm Talk I'm way too broke for this um you know that pescatarian life is next level uh but i try to kind of mix things up i will buy the meat that's on sale if one cut of beef is cheaper than the other and i can sub those out for recipes i'm not committed to a specific type of meat and i think it's just good to have that flexibility we do that at the fish counter by the way we'll find the one that's on sale and we will um uh, uh, uh try it out we tried turbo fish last week which was really good. Huh. I think I prepared it incorrectly, but <laughs> but I learned it wasn't the fish. It was the stuff I put on it. I just need to, to do it different. Len, you guys cut out the beef at all? No, 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 no. That's like, we, we, uh, we go through a lot of meat in our household. So, but it is, it's so expensive and it got so much more expensive during the pandemic. The last one on here, plant a garden. It says that this, uh, this, th this would lower your expenses. And, and Doug is, Doug no. saying no. Why are you saying strongly no? disagree? We we did that uh, a couple a couple of years ago. We've done it on and off, but a couple of years ago, we went all in and built the raised beds, like twenty by twenty garden with deer fencing protection, the watering system, the whole thing. Uh, and I got to have uh, a dinner's worth of green beans that cost me about six hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> our our stacker and, and community. six months of attention. Yes. Our stacker community said the same thing in our Facebook group. They said, hey, it's better food. It tastes great, but it is not cheaper. And, and anybody else here try to do a garden? I do the I, You know garden. what I do? Tomatoes. I and do tomatoes, a garden too. Oh, tomatoes. tomatoes. Tomatoes are worth, they're so expensive and they're, it's not really hard to, difficult to grow them as long as you can keep the squirrels and the rats and the other critters away from them. To me, it's worth just, if you're just going to plant one vegetable uh, and a tomato plant will push out a lot of tomatoes over a season. Hold on. So. Are we going to let him just throw rats out there and we're just going to walk away from that like it never <laughs> happened? We need to talk about the rats. <laughs> it, it, it's Southern California. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my you, God. You shouldn't talk about your neighbors that way, Len. It's <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Man, not good. Uh, yeah, it, it, I do the herb garden as well. The herb garden's easy. It is cheap. And, um, man, that mint grows like a weed. Basil. Yeah. I'm rosemary. mint, basil, and rosemary. I mean, I kill everything that's green. So those are the things that have worked for me. <laughs> well, we're going to leave it right there, everybody. Uh, if you want to read this piece, 12 Ways to Drastically Reduce Your Grocery Budget, we'll link to it on our show notes page at stackybenjamins.com. Let's find out what's going on where our roundtable participants live. Oh, gee, big plans this weekend, my friend. Uh, yeah, actually, this is a big weekend, uh, traveling a little bit out, uh, West and, uh, and then of course watching basketball because it's, uh, basketball tournament time. So, yeah. yes, big time of year for college basketball fans. We'll have our guest of honor go last. Mr. Penzo, what's going on at lenpenzo.com, my friend. Hey, just out of, uh, just out of coincidence, I talk about my grocery bills and, and the, uh, Main thing that I do that uh, saves money 
and can save you up to 80%. Some of you out there up to 80%. So I go through Keep some Keep the numbers. rats out. Keep yeah, the rats out. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or just eat the rats too. Maybe that's... No? Oh, I don't know. I don't. I'm afraid like of the rats chicken. around here. So uh, you got to go to limpenza.com to find out. <laughs> the rats even even play play a role in in Len's thinking there. Janice, I'm sorry this uh, this happened this way. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Th- Forgive thanks you. for joining us. So first of all, let's talk briefly. What's you know nobody listens to the show. So what's something secret you can't tell anybody about that's coming up on the podcast? Ooh, I'm going to have my mom and my sister on the show. For oh. the first time, so that's going to be fun because I'm roping them into the nonsense that I'm doing. They they don't like, you know, social media and being in front of people. So I'm going to make them very uncomfortable during the whole process. <laughs> you're going to grill them? Just grill them with the microphones yeah. on? Absolutely. Turn the lights on like, hot? Yes, absolutely. And then let's let's talk again about about the summit, the dates of the summit when we're all invited to come join you in Puerto Rico. Yes. So this is happening June 8th to the 11th, and it's going to be two and a half days of interesting conversations, networking, definitely going to do some dancing, eating delicious food, exploring the island, and just really enjoying conversations that are both enlightening, but also inspiring. Um, You know, I feel like a lot of what frustrates folks when it comes to conversations around money, it's just it can be a sense of elitism or like, you should know this, you know, you're an adult. And so we really want to create an, an atmosphere that invites folks to ask questions. You know, there's no stupid question when it comes to figuring out how to do things with money. And so I'm, I'm really excited. I, I, I'm the type of person that gets anxiety about like throwing a little dinner party in my house. So really? this is like next level, you know, uh, but luckily I'm not doing it alone. I have an amazing team that's working behind the scenes. So just really excited to see how this comes together. That's why you don't come across as that as a person that gets anxious at all. Oh God, no, that's like my middle name for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, Hey, so I'm going to put on this big summit and it'll be, yeah, yeah. no big deal. Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> the next time Janice is with us, she would have pulled all her hair out. She's, she's done. <laughs> Uh, uh, what's the URL, Janice, where people can get more? So you can go to OurMoneyOurPower.co uh, to find out everything about the itinerary, the speakers, the location, travel dates, all the FAQs, and much more. Sweet. You know what? We'll link to it again on our show notes page at StackingBenjamins.com. All right. Man, that was fun. Uh, well, except the part about TB. <laughs> Besides that, <laughs> it was it was pretty good. Doug, uh, take us home, man. What should we have learned today? Well, Joe, first, take some advice from our panel and get lower grocery bills by budgeting, avoiding the prepackaged stuff, and using technology. Second, in addition to finding ways to save on groceries, don't forget about looking for ways to save time at the grocery store and in your kitchen by planning your meals in advance. But the big lesson, apparently, grazing in the produce section isn't socially acceptable. It's called taste testing, people. When did it become a crime to try before you buy? I mean, isn't that what singles bars are all about? Thanks to Janice Torres for joining us today. Be sure to check out her podcast, Yo Quiero Dinero, wherever you're listening to my melodious voice right now. We'll also include links in our show notes at stackingbenjamins.com. Thanks to Len Penzo for joining us today. You can find Len at lenpenzo.com slash I cut my own cheese. (laughs) Thanks also to OG for joining us today. Looking for good financial planning help? Head to stackingbenjamins.com slash OG for his calendar. Welcome to the after show. This is the part of the show that doesn't exist. And if you're here for money discussions or more grocery discussion, we're, we're done with that. Uh, join us again on Monday for that, because sometimes we talk about movies. Sometimes we talk about weird news today. I want to talk about this. We talked a lot about saving money 
But this time, I want to have the kind of the opposite discussion. I know that there are some restaurants that I go to where, you know, I don't I don't brag about the fact that I go to them, but they're like my guilty pleasure. Like, you know what? Nobody needs to know, but I'm going to this restaurant. Maybe I'll sit in a corner booth alone where nobody can see me. And I absolutely, I absolutely, uh, you know what? And while I don't maybe love it, it just, it's a place I go back to. It's like my place. I wonder if you guys, if you guys have those, I'll tell you what mine is. And this is, this is really horrible, especially with the Italian in the room. Len, we like going to our Olive Garden. Like we just really, really enjoy getting the soup and salad at the Olive Garden. And sometimes every once in a while we get crazy and we get one of these made up Italian word dishes where, you know, there's people in the back throwing the crap in the microwave. Like you go in there knowing it. Well, you know what? It, there's, there, I think there's a 12 step program for that, Joe, but, but uh, that's okay. You, uh, to each his own, I guess, you know? Well, but you, I'm sure you've got one too. Everybody knows about your Benny Hanna fix like you're 12 years old. Yeah, but I, I'm not get, you know, I was just there yesterday again, uh, actually. Yes. Uh, but uh, I, I, they do, I don't the feel guilty. Train, do I don't feel the- guilty. I don't feel guilty going to Benny Hanna. Now here's one where I do don't want anybody to catch me. It's, and it's, I love the place. It's, ta- it's Taco Bell. I love it. I admit it. <laughs> That is I mean, you terrible. you give me a chalupa, uh, you know, a couple chalupas and a and a you know a Mexican pizza, and uh, I'm good. I mean, that's just and, and we used to go a lot. Mountain do sure. We used to go. We used to go a lot. And then you know what happened though. And if you're listening, anybody there at the Taco Bell district office or corporate office, uh, please take heed here. We used to go a lot more often. Uh, but you guys discontinued the green sauce and the honeybee uh, just disowned you guys once you got rid of that green sauce. So <laughs> bring the green sauce Taco back Bell. and I will go more frequently. It's a true Taco Bell fish. You probably do call right it just green sauce also. Because <laughs> they can't really use the actual term because it's, it would be false advertising. It's like that from that Disney song, like, try the green stuff, it's delicious, because nobody knows what the hell's in it. Gray. Right? Gray stuff. Oh, it's the gray stuff. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Janice, like, you've got one. Yeah. You've you've it's got a restaurant. I do. I, I, I was going to say Taco Bell, but you I also... You were going to say Taco Bell. I, I was, but also Red Lobster. Like, I feel like <laughs> Red Lobster is, like, the place where my family would go when we were just, like, living life, right? Like, the tax refund came in. We're like, yes, we're getting, like, <laughs> extra biscuits, right? It was, like, <laughs> the fancy, the fanciest thing you could do. You know, they, they make their baked potatoes with, like, a salt crust. It's just so, like, pinkies up, bougie. But I also will never go there with anybody. <laughs> It's embarrassing, especially now that you can buy the box mix to make the biscuits. The biscuits, but they don't come good. out the same. Oh I no! Feel like you they don't literally think so? dunk them in butter at the restaurant. I feel like I just need to dump them in a tub of butter, and maybe they'll taste the same. Oh, I, Do you know I what think the they reason taste is for almost that? Identical. I think they're really? great. Oh yes, I, I actually. Then. I I actually know the reason why they usually taste different. You know, we uh, I came back from a trip to Italy and uh, asked our local wine guy. I said, "How come I get wines from your store and and they taste okay? They're all right, but then I have it in Italy and that same wine is fantastic." He's like, "Cuz you're sitting in the middle of Venice." <laughs> Right, because <laughs> yeah. you're in Rome with a glass of wine. So the answer is Len, because Janice is sitting by the huge fish tank <laughs> with with a, with with a, a dozen biscuits. <laughs> right, <laughs> not hey, Joe, my highest you, moment. <laughs> hey Joe, I want to know did you, when you play were... in the, uh, the 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 ultimate feast spread out in front of her. Hey, when you when you were in Italy, did you stop at any uh, stop at the uh, Olive Garden in Italy? In any of the? <laughs> Can you put, that's the only the place. Piazza de San Marco. You can't miss it. it so, <laughs> it's right, right. Would that be horrible? You're in the middle of. It's right by the Trevi Fountain. I saw right. it. <laughs> Just around the corner. Wouldn't that be a great uh, picture? <laughs> Hello from Italy, and you get the Olive Garden in the background. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can't going back to Taco Bell. I can't let this moment go because one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite comedians talks about Mexican food. So we gotta we gotta do that. I used to be a waiter in a Mexican restaurant, which is kind of silly because I am Dominican, you know. 
I love Mexican food. <laughs> it's essentially all the same ingredients, but as a waiter, you'd have to deal with those stupid questions. You know, people would be like, hey, what's, what's nachos? <laughs> nachos? That's tortilla with cheese, meat, or vegetable. Uh, what's a burrito? <laughs> tortilla with cheese, meat, or vegetables. What's a tostada? Tortilla with cheese, meat, or vegetables. What's a taco? Is that hard to follow? <laughs> it's all the same. That's great. <laughs> uh, Gaffigan. Uh, OG, your restaurant of choice? Yeah. Your I guilty pleasure? <laughs> French laundry. Yeah, um, that's <laughs> He sits in the corner of the French laundry. El Pais yeah. in Spain. <laughs> oh, the list could go on. Saying. La Barnadine in New York City. I know why, but Lou. With Thomas Keller, that loser. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we, we have a very small circle of places that we will go because I'm not very adventurous. So I do not like to be disappointed. And so once I have found something that I like, I refuse to try something else for fear of the fact that the other place will suck and I will be very angry the entire time. So. And we don't want to make that. OG angry. I think that's the yeah. lesson here. Don't I think make Culver's. Angry. If I had to pick a place, like I think Culver's is a place that I don't want to be caught. Oh, that's good ice I, cream, man. Well, it's, it's, it's terrible it's, after like it's, butter dripping down your chin. It's like, you're just no, I don't eat anything except good. the ice cream, but that's the point is like, I just eat the, I just, it's not ice cream. What is it? It's custard. So, um, you know, so, so yeah, we'll have that content, but it's, um, but like the floor is always sticky. It like, you know, there's just always oh. a lot of like stuff going on where I'm just like, this is I, such a classy joint. No, you're making and then this I don't, up. I do not like your disparaging comments about my Culver's. <laughs> Culver's was about to sponsor the show, OG. And now you I love it. I'm just saying I wouldn't want to be caught dead there. The floors are never <laughs> sticky. They're very they're very focused on cleanliness. Very now, to be fair, staff. 100% staff is, staff is great. And for us in particular, because my son has a peanut allergy, they're very accommodating to the peanut allergy, which is just, I mean, just so, it's such an amazing thing. It's hard. Most people just go, <laughs> sorry, guess you can't eat yeah. your breath, you know, but so they do a good job. But, but, um, but yeah, the, the food doesn't look appealing and, oh, and everything's sticky. So I just, you know, I just, <laughs> just eat my ice cream and, I, I was out west recently, and uh, I uh, I did a taste because I'm such a Culver's fanboy, and I did a taste test between an In and Out burger and a Culver's. But no comparison. Culver's kicks the shit out of In and Out, and he only really? had like four minutes between the taste tests. He had both in hand. <laughs> yeah, I was going double fisting it, going back and forth, and there was no comparison. In and out's just a lot of hype, I think. They just have a oh, really solid yeah. they're they're strategy. Okay, we gotta the end the show awful. before a fight breaks out. <laughs> Janice, Janice, I liked you so much and now you gotta go. Oh man, this was fun. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs>